Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you hear me from the back? Good. Yeah, it's so good to be in person, huh? Amen. I'm just so glad that the Lord is gathering us in his name. Amen. So that together we can run the race. Amen. Don't you think this is wonderful? Amen. We can all run the race. Amen. You know, last night when our brother was speaking, I was so touched. You know, this is not the first time I heard this message. But last night, it seems as if the Lord is speaking to us again. Amen. Oh, I just praise the Lord so much yes. that he is still speaking. Amen. His word is not real as in Samuel's time. Amen. Oh, the Lord is speaking to us. Amen. So I just pray that the Lord would really touch us and give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation Amen. so that we can hear all these things. Amen. You know, last night when James was talking about this matter of faith, it's very related to our running of the race. Yeah. This is really something, you know, and that this running of the race is to walk in the way. Yeah. You know, this way is for us to be able to fulfill what the Lord is after, especially in His God's economy. Don't you think this is wonderful? You know, after the meeting, I was... Uh, sharing with uh, James, I said, did you hear this during the Ichiro? He said, he cannot remember that we talk about this. <laughs> okay, but praise the Lord. I think it's good that uh, we have this divine forgetfulness so that we can be totally open to the Lord. Amen. You know, if we remember everything, we don't have to be open. Right. You know, but Amen. praise the Lord, we can come here and speak all these things again. Amen. Don't you think that is good? Yeah. You know, I always tell the saints that, you know, the best fried rice is to fry old rice. You know that? If you just first cook the rice, you cannot fry those. You have to put it in the refrigerator until the next morning, then you fry it. You know, this is like when we re-speak the Word of God, you know, we can fully enjoy the Lord a lot more. Amen. Don't you think that is wonderful? Amen. Okay, uh, you know, last night when our brother is talking about, I, I was just so touched that what the Lord is speaking is to these two things. You know, when we talk about running the race, finish our course, probably the most important thing that is in our mind is that we have to do it. It's so it seems like we ourselves have to do it. This is an individual thing. You know, but last night when James was sharing, I was just so touched that this is not an individual thing. We are here in mutuality to help one another to run the race. Amen. Don't you think this is wonderful? wonderful? We are not alone. This is not the Olympic race, you know. You know, this is the race in God's eternal economy. Amen. Oh, where we need one another to run this race. And you know, he also said that this race is actually the way. You know, so as Brother James was talking, you know, I just felt like maybe this is what Brother Lee has seen. That's why from 1984 to 1997, he talks about the God-ordained way. Amen. Don't you think that is wonderful? He talks about the God-ordained way so we should not think that after he returned from Taiwan in 1989 to Anaheim, he has another subject. Actually, all those speaking, all the way up to 1997, when he went to the Lord, he's talking about the God-ordained way. Amen. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, that's why he talks about all these things, you know. I still remember when he came back to Anaheim in 1989, I had a fellowship with him, and he said, that although it was very good in Taiwan, you know, they were able to baptize more than 30,000 people. So I thought he is very satisfied. I was very happy that I was able to partake. You know, I was able to baptize so many people. I thought I have a few stars, you know, on my shoulder. <laughs> you know, we have to have all those little dots on our, on our uh, nameplate, you know, on our badge. So I said, man, this is not so bad, you know. <laughs> but then probably said he was not satisfied. So I said, why? He said, because the remaining fruit was not there. Out of 30,000, he felt like only about 6,000 
remaining fruit. I feel like 6,000 is wonderful. Before we don't have 6,000, we now have 6,000. But he says it's not good. So he needs to continue to speak. That's why he goes into all the speaking about the high peak truths, about the vital groups, and all these matters that is very important so that we can walk this God ordained way, not just to save sinner, but to able to nourish them, to be able to perfect them, to be able to bring them into the building up of the body of Christ so that we can bring the Lord back. Don't you think this is wonderful? So this morning, early this morning, as I was considering what to share, you know, first of all, I felt like I need a lot of prayer. And not just my prayer. I need to have the brothers pray with me. So early this morning, well, not so early, at 7 o'clock, I was praying with the brothers that serve in Israel. And they prayed so much for this conference because they felt like, you know, this is a very important conference so they prayed a lot. You know, they prayed a lot that the Lord would really touch us. Because this matter of faith is so important. Our faith needs to increase. Amen. You know, in one of our prayer meeting in Anaheim, you know, we were asking, you know, how do we pray for Ukraine? You know, we all have a lot of feelings, you know. You know, for many nights, I cannot sleep well because I'm seeing all those Ukrainian saints, you know, trying to escape Ukraine, you know, so I was really bothered by all this stuff, you know, so we asked some of the co-workers, you know, how should we pray about Ukraine? And one of the co-workers said, we need to pray that their faith will increase, that their faith would be established, even through all these difficult things, may the Lord really touch them, open their eyes to see that the Lord is still the sovereign one. And so because if they see such thing, their faith will increase. So somehow, you know, as we fellowship about this, we felt like this is the work of the Lord, you know, to lead all these saints, many of the saints, not all of them, but many of the saints out of Ukraine, you know, to go into different countries in Europe, so that they would actually be used by the Lord to strengthen all those churches in Europe. I don't know if we ever see this, you know. When I saw this, you know, all of a sudden I don't worry too much because <laughs> our Lord is the sovereign one. Amen. Peter, did you see this? I did. Very good. <laughs> yeah, the Lord is gaining all this. And you know, and then when I was fellowshipping with the German brothers, they said, out of these Ukrainian saints that went to Germany, I think there will be five churches that will be established. Wow. Oh, five churches that will be strengthened. You know, there are some, some brothers in there, you know, but it's not so strengthened. So it's not really a church yet. And it's, the only, it's like the, there will probably be a church in Bremen that is close to Hamburg. There will be a church in uh, Hanover, right? And there will be a church in Heidelberg. You know, these are all very good cities in Germany, you know, this is quite something. And then already some of the Ukrainian saints went to Leipzig, you know. Oh, I just praise the Lord. Okay, so I just hope that the Lord would really touch us. You know, these days, as we see that the days of the Lord is near, all our faith has to increase. Amen. We need to have such a touch of the Lord so that we will not be like the people in the world. You know, they are worried, they don't know what to do. They are worried very much because of themselves. You know, what will we be? You know, but praise the Lord, we are not here worrying for ourselves. We are just here to be fully concerned about how we can participate in the work of the Lord so that he could actually use us for his own economy. Oh, I just hope that the Lord would do this. So this morning, you know, as I was considering before the Lord, and as I was remembering what James was sharing about the way, you know, I just remember in the last training that Broly gave to the FTTA trainees in 1996, he came back to the message on the vital groups. Okay, and that's the third time he shared about vital group. And each of this sharing is not short. It's all trainings. You know, it's long messages and many messages. 
you know, the first one is the, the, the urgent need for training the vital group, and then there is the training on the vital group. You know, the last one, he just called it the vital group. Okay, the vital groups. You know, if you remember, I suppose all of us have read this, we probably hear this, we fellowship about this. You know, in the church in Anaheim, we went through this book so many times, you know, because we felt like we are not there yet, so we are fellowshipping so much. And recently, we just finished reading the whole book again. But after I read all this book, I forgot that Broly actually shares something that is very important, which is what James has touched last night. He shared that the constituent of the vital group. If you, do you remember what is the constituent of the vital groups? You know, many of us heard about this vital group. The constituent of the vital group is with these six kind of people. The first is the believers. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord, we are believers. Amen. Don't you think that's wonderful? Amen. We are believers. Without us coming to the Lord, without us hearing the word of faith, the word of Christ, we could never believe in the Lord. You know, to believe in the Lord is a great miracle. Don't you think so? You know, without the Lord shining upon us, how can we believe something that we have never seen? But praise the Lord, we are believers. And the second thing is, we are being discipled. You know, the Lord stays on earth for 33 and a half years, so that at least he could use those last three years, three and a half years, to disciple Peter, James, and John. You know, in the race of the disciple, so that he can give them a commission at the end to go there and to tell them to go disciples all the nations. Disciple all the nations. You know, he did not say, just go disciple the Jews. He's disciple all the nations. Oh, praise the Lord. We just need to pray to the Lord that he would continually disciple us so that we can disciple others. And the third constituent of the vital group it's the witnesses. It's the witnesses. You know, James touched this last night. You know, we, for us to be a witnesses, when to be witnesses for the Lord, we need to see something. We need to hear something. You know, for other people to see, for other people to hear, and they just tell you about it, you're not qualified to be a witness because it is hearsay. It's not admissible in the court. <laughs> it's not true. You know, so we need to see something. Oh, I just pray these days, you know, you know, when all this problem is rising and all these things as never before. You know, I have never, and I ask so many people, even much older people, you know, we have never seen such a pandemic that lasts for so long. And it's not ending yet. It's, always, it's still continuing. You know, so I just pray that the Lord would really shine upon us so that we can see something. Oh, we need to be witnesses of what the Lord is doing today. Don't you think that is wonderful? You know, so for us to be witnesses, we need to see something even more than most Christians saw. We need to see what Paul saw. Amen. That there is this thing called the body of Christ. Amen. And we are members of the body of Christ. Amen. You know, if we really see that we are members of the body of Christ, then we would fully agree that this race is not an individual race. Yeah. You know, it's not a race of your hand, you know, aside from your feet, or the feet aside from your head. The you know, whole body has to run the race. Amen. Don't you think this is wonderful? Amen. The whole body has to run the race. We are members of the body. And for us to really see this, we should also hear what the Lord has said to the disciple. You know, as when he was resurrected, he called his disciple, you know, his brothers. We are not just members of the body of Christ. We are brothers of Christ. We are brothers of Christ. So that's the fifth constituent. And the sixth constituent is we are prophet of Christ. We are prophet of Christ. The Lord has done so much things to us so that we can be the Samuel of today to rise up and prophesy concerning what the Lord is doing so that we can all run the race, you know, to fulfill what the Lord has so desired. Don't you think that is wonderful? 
And yesterday, when uh, our brother touched these two verses, you know, which is in, uh, in Romans, is it Romans 12, 1? No, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, you know, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, that was quite something. You know? But when we talk about Hebrews 1, verse 2, it's talking about looking away unto Jesus, looking away unto Jesus. You know, it seems like so many things is happening. You know, it's very, it's very easy for us to look away from Jesus unto all these difficult things, isn't it? But Paul is telling us in Hebrew, we need to look away. There is there's so many things, but we need to look away unto Jesus. You know, I, I just praise the Lord so much that we are all in this journey from the altar to the Holy of Holies. Well, you think that's a wonderful thing? This is our way. This is the God-ordained way. This is what the Lord is doing to keep us going from the altar all the way to the Holy of Holies. When we can touch the throne of grace, when actually we can be joined to heaven and we can bring heaven to earth. Amen. Don't you think this is what the Lord is doing? Yes. You know, when the Lord said, we need to pray thy kingdom come, Amen. it's not just to pray that, we need to pray ourselves into the Holy of Holies so that we can touch the throne of grace and allow heaven to be on earth, about the kingdom to be here on earth. So I just pray so much that the Lord would do this. And so when we come and look away unto Jesus, you know, this very Christ would infuse himself, himself as faith into us. Don't you think this is wonderful? You know, how can you have faith? Just go spend time with the Lord. Okay, don't think, you know, how can I have faith? You know, you do not have faith. You cannot be a believer unless you go to the Lord. Spend time with the Lord. Talk to the Lord. You know, I'm just so glad that we can talk to the Lord. You know, we can talk to the Lord. You know, yeah, praise the Lord. As we talk to him, he will infuse us with faith. And this faith, as to the message this morning, is the linking faith. It links us to God and link God to us. It links us to God and link God to us. Don't you think this is wonderful? This is the faith that we receive when we believe into Christ. Amen. It is not just a belief in Christ. Belief in Christ is different from believing into Christ. You know, belief in Christ is that you agree. He is Christ. Yes, he came. You know, you believe all these facts. You know? But to believe into Christ is you believe yourself into him. You know, that is different. Oh, I just hope that we are all believe into Christ and allow him to be our faith, the faith that we can believe in him, the faith that would encourage us to go on until we reach the end. You know, our end is our goal, the goal of the new Jerusalem. You know, so let's come to this outline. You know, those three verses that uh, we read a while ago, is very much the, the burden on the, for this message. You know, the first verse we read is in Hebrew 13, 7, and it said, remember the ones leading you who have spoken to you the word of God and considering the issue of their manner of life, imitate their faith. Okay, first of all, it said, remember the ones leading you. I hope, you know, as a, uh, you know, even this morning, as I was having breakfast with James, we, we really feel that right now, it seems that the enemy knows that his time is near. I think the enemy knows that, you know, so he created so much problem. You know, we created so much problem. You know, problem that we thought is not here anymore. You know, I was so glad when the saints would go to Russia and all this, and I went to Russia so many times. We thought the Russian problem is over, but now it's restarting, you know, so what do we do with this, you know, you know but praise the Lord, you know, even though the enemy is like the rolling lion that never sleep, we need to rise up, we need to rise up, and one of the things that we need to do is we need to remember the leading ones, 
You know, I hope that you are all praying for your leading ones. You know, for the churches to go on, we need all these leading ones. You know, to remember the ones leading you who have spoken to you the word of God. Yes, they may have spoken the word of God to you, but don't forget about remembering them, praying for them, so that the Lord would continue to guide them and to enable them to run the race with endurance. Amen. Don't you think that is wonderful? Yeah. We can all pray for one another. You know, yesterday, James talked about, you know, these days we have Zoom. And I think, you know, some people say they are all Zoom out. You know, I cannot understand what Zoom out means, you know. <laughs> because I was always Zoom in. <laughs> but praise the Lord, without such Zooming, you know, I cannot be all over the world in one day. You know, in the morning, you know, for more than two years now, I prayed with Israel. For more than two years, every morning from 7 to 7.30, we prayed for Israel, we stand with Israel. And just by praying like this, we see how the Jews are open. So many people are baptized, and not just the Jews, the Arabs are open. Wow. You know, this is quite something, you know. You know, even yesterday, as I was talking to some of the leading ones in, in, in uh, Israel, they are saying, you know, maybe some of the Arabs, you know, the Arab-speaking one in Israel, should be raised up to become full-timers so that they can help the Arabs in, in Germany. You know, so we are talking about this. You know. Don't you think that is wonderful? Amen. You know, my daily life is the Zoom with, with Russia, the Zoom with uh, Israel, the Zoom with Germany. I don't know how many times I go to Good Elim. It's Zooming, Zooming, Zooming. Hey. Hey. <laughs> but praise the Lord. So let's not be discouraged by Zoom. Let's not be Zoom out, just Zoom in. Amen. But praise the Lord, we can also come together like this. Amen. Don't you think that's wonderful? Amen. You know, I, I went to Houston in the middle of March for my first in-person conference, you know, and I was just so glad. You know, I was sort of forced to go there. I was reluctant, you know. But the brothers say, if you don't come, we won't have this. So either you agree in a short time that you'll come so we can announce it, or we will not have this. And we have that conference for more than, since 1983. You know, every year at this time in March, we have a conference in Houston. So I prayed so much. So I prayed to the Lord, make my wife agree. <laughs> Sometimes they are my leading ones. <laughs> so, and so I first talked to my wife. He said, no, 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 this is still, you know, COVID time. But then later on, I think the Lord touched her. He said, okay, go, but I'll go with you. No, he said, but she said it very nicely. He said, I'll go with you to protect you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, we had such a wonderful time in Houston. You know, but this is the first in-person meeting that I speak in English. The Houston is speaking in Chinese. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. The Lord is leading us. Okay. So we need to continue to pray for one another. We pray for the leading ones. We pray for those that speak the word of God to us. You know, some of these things you don't know, and we don't want to talk too much about it. But we need to pray for all these brothers. We need to pray for all these brothers, you know, so that they can continue to dispense the word of God to us so that we can be filled. We can be transfused, infused, infiltrate with the faith that is in, that is Christ, that is God himself. You know, we need to pray so much. But this verse did not end here. And it said, considering the issue of their manner of life, imitate their faith. This is actually two things, considering their manner of life. You know, this speaker needs to have a manner of life. It's just talking about us too, you know. We're not just praying for other people. We are praying for ourselves. You know, we want to serve the Lord. Maybe we are serving with the children, with the young people. We are serving in our group meeting. 
you know, we speak the word of God to one another, right? But even as we are speaking the word of God to one another, we need to consider the manner of life. What kind of life are we living? We don't want to speak one thing and then do another thing. We don't like to do, you know, what some, some father tell their children, you know, do as I say, but don't do as I do. We said, hey, some father actually tell their children, Lou, listen to what I say, but don't do what I do. <laughs> We're saying, listen to what we say and do as what I do. We want to be the lead sheep. We want to be the lead sheep. So we need to pray for ourselves as well, so that we have a manner of life that could be considered by the saints, of course, in a positive light, okay? And then we have to have a faith that is worth remembering by the saints. We have to have a faith that is worth reminding by the saints. So I just hope that as we come to this message, we would really see that this message here, this linking faith, the faith of the overcomers. Don't you think this is wonderful? You know, I, I suppose we have all heard about the linking faith, messages on the linking faith, but to join these two things is very enlightening to me. This linking faith is the faith of the overcomers. That means if you want to be the overcomers, you need to be in this linking faith day in and day out. Every day of your life, you touch this linking faith so that it's not by your own ability, it's not by your own endeavoring, you became the overcomer that the Lord is calling in the last days, in Revelation, how the Lord is calling for all this overcomer out of all the churches, good church, bad church, you know, he is always calling for such overcomer. So we should not blame for the church we are, you know, because the Lord is still calling. He's calling for us. And the way that we could do it is by being in this linking faith. Don't you think this is wonderful? So as we come to this message, we need to see that this message is actually a what a panoramic view of the faith of the believers. It's, this is broadly speaking, you know, it's the panoramic, panoramic view of the faith of the believers. But also in this message, we want to speak about the practicality of our living by faith. The practicality of our living by faith. So we, can, we should not just say we have, we, we now because we believe in the Lord, we have faith. It is one thing to have faith. It's another thing to live by this faith. You know, to have faith is good, but after you have faith, you need to live according to this faith. You live by faith, you know, so that we can be the overcomers, the overcomers that will bring the Lord back, okay? So, you know, when we talk about Hebrews 13, seven, this is the last, last chapter of the whole book of Hebrew. And Paul is telling them that you need to have a manner of life and you need to have a faith that can be remembered by, by all the people so that they will consider this faith. Okay, um, let me read you some footnote from Hebrews 13, seven. Footnote one, under the word remember. Okay, I was very touched by this footnote. You know, I'm so glad that we had the recovery version, don't you think? Yes. You know, even during this pandemic time, we have five tables set up every week in Anaheim. And we are passing out free recovery version. And I was so touched that so many people actually won it. And they would come and people get baptized. They came into the church all by showing them that there is a book that they could understand. Yes. Can you don't? Oh, you know, many Christians, they don't read the Bible because they do not understand it, you know. But now with all these footnotes and all these things, you know, they love it and they jump into it and they become propagator of this book. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, let me read you this footnote one. Huh? Okay, about the word remember. 
This is essential in the church life. The minister of the word of God should have a manner of life that issue in an example of faith for the church members, the receivers of the word of God to imitate. Then the church members not only will receive the word that the ministers ministers, but also will imitate the minister of faith, which is expressed in their manner of life. Okay, and then it continues. You know, the word that they ministered and the life that they live must have been entirely Christ. Must be entirely Christ. And their faith must have been the faith in Christ, of which Christ is both the author and the perfecter. Such a, such a manner of life and such a faith were surely worthy to be imitated by the believers who received the word of God that the ministers ministered and who consider the issue of their manner of life. Don't you think this is wonderful? You know, you can go back and read this, you know, and pray over this, that we will have a proper manner of life and we can have the faith that uh, the saints could consider and imitate so that they can actually have this thinking faith, you know, for the return of our Lord. Okay. Now we come to Roman number one. Roman number one says, in order to be made full of faith. You remember there's such a verse called men full of faith. Yes, we know we need to have faith, but he's saying that we need to be men full of faith. Okay, that is in Acts, especially in Acts 6, 5. You know. It's talking about Stephen. Stephen is a man full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, okay? So when he talks about full of faith, it's also talking about full of the Holy Spirit. We need to see that faith comes out of hearing and hearing through the word of Christ, okay? That we read that verse. So if we want to be men full of faith, what do we do? We need to see that this faith comes out of hearing and the hearing through the word of Christ. You know, I just praise the Lord so much. You know, I heard that last night there is about 100, 130 here? 190. 190 here? 197. 197 and about 630 in Zoom. You know, so this is probably about a thousand people in this meeting, you know. You know, don't you think this is wonderful? You know, the Lord's recovery is just so precious. You know, and Broly actually said, people in the Lord's recovery is an inheritance that the Lord has given us so that together we can go on with the Lord. Don't you think that's wonderful? You know, we all have such a burden to hear the word of God. Amen. Oh, by hearing the word of God, you know, we actually receive the word of Christ, which is faith into us. You know, just like Stephen, you know, Stephen, you know, functioned as a, probably a deacon and one who served the table. You know, it's not something spectacular today we would consider, you know, but he is one. He was chosen because he was full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so when we talk about being full of faith, we need to consider where is the source of this faith? Where is the source of this faith? You know, A here says, the source of faith is the word. The source of faith is the word. Okay? But we have to realize the crystallization of this point, there are three aspects of the word. You know, I'm just so glad because of the word, you know, because of the source of faith, so many became believers. You know, uh, my parents, my grandparents, they all came out of China, in the southern part of China, in the same province as Wachmani, but in the southern part. Wachmani is in the northern part of Fujian province. We are from the southern part. You know, they were Buddhists for a long, long time, for generations and generations. They were Buddhists. But you know, one day, two British young sisters came 
They're only about 18, 19 years old. They came from England. And they do not know what to do, expect, you know, because nobody received them, you know. We don't want to go against our tradition. Our tradition is to be Buddhist. Our tradition is to worship the ancestors. Our tradition is to worship all those different gods. Because they, as my grandmother told me, you know, they were very afraid that those gods actually are jealous of one another. <laughs> so they have to worship all of them to make sure, you know, they, they are peaceful. You've never heard of such thing? <laughs> you ask some of the Buddhists, they will tell you. <laughs> but maybe you can even ask the Catholics because they worship so many idols. Oh, yeah. Anyway, but he said one day, these two young sisters traveled together by walking. They don't come in their Rolls Royce, you know. They come walking to our village, but there is no one open to them. But they found my grandmother and decided to wash my grandmother's feet. You know, and that, he, they did it once a month for many months. So finally, my grandmother is open. And what amazed her is that this true young sister actually speak Fulkenese. It's not Mandarin. It's a dialect in our province. You know? Don't you think that's wonderful? You know, they have the faith in them. And they brought this faith to China to speak this faith into those people. You know, I visited this village some time ago, maybe five years ago. And I could see that so many of the household are all believers. Even after so many years under the communist regime, they still put out, you know, Emmanuel. And my grandfather's house has a name. And the name is Zion. <laughs> I'm glad probably those authority that don't know what Zion means. <laughs> but my grandfather knows. You know, he wants to be Zion in Jerusalem. Amen. Don't you think that is wonderful? You know, oh, this is just so wonderful that the Lord did so much so that we can become believers. Don't you think that's wonderful? Yeah. So that we can become men full of faith. They brought the word of God to us. You know, sometimes I share with the trainees in uh, FTTA. And they said they have burden to go to Europe and they have all this burden. I said, well, if you have burden to go, better learn their languages. Yeah. Don't learn it while you go there. You know, so we have to spend time supporting you to learn another language. It's better you learn the language while you are here. Don't you think that's true? You know, those, those missionaries from China Inland Mission, they learned the language before they ever set foot in China. You know, that's why they can speak all this thing and become so effective. I think Peter could tell you, you know, this time when we are trying to take care of the Ukrainian things, if you don't speak Russian, it's very difficult. It's very difficult if you don't speak Russians, but not so many people speak Ukrainian, do they? No. Yeah, not many. So, but if they understand Russians, so we are trying to get all the people that can speak Russian to go again. You know? Anyway, praise the Lord. The source of faith is the word of God. Amen. Okay, in this word of God that we are talking about has three aspects. There is the written word of God, there is the living word of God, and there is the uh, applied word of God. There is the living, uh, written word, there is the living word, and there is an applied word. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, when we come to this, It's good for us to know that God only speak one word. Okay. And after he spoke, someone wrote it down. Okay. So we have the written word of God, which is the Bible. Don't you think this is wonderful? We have the Bible. Hallelujah. You know, just, just imagine. If this world has no Bible, what will we become? What will become of humanity? But praise the Lord, we have the written word of God. Amen. So God only speaks one kind of word. And this, after he has spoken it, it was written down called the Bible. Okay. And so the Bible is the only word 
That's why it's called the Bible, the book. It's the book, you know. There is no other book that could be compared to it, you know. And this book is the word of God. But if we actually exercise our spirit to touch the spirit that is in the word of God, this written word became or becomes the living word of Christ. So it depends upon you. You know, you can all have only the written word, but if you exercise your spirit, you know, by calling on the name of the Lord, you know, by prayer reading the word, you know, this word become the living word. And if you really touch the spirit and life that is in this word, this word become the applied word. You know, so when we talk about, you know, the source of faith coming from the word, it is not just the written word, it's the living word, and it's the applied word. As we touch the spirit that is in the word, it's this spirit oh, that become the source of our faith. So I just hope, you know, in the morning, when we wake up, let's call on the name of the Lord, tell the Lord we love him. And then as we go to the Holy Word of Morning Revival, we use our spirit to touch the spirit that is in the Word of God. And through this, we will have faith. Amen. We would have faith in the Lord. Amen. Don't you think this is wonderful? Yeah. You know, the Lord has told us all this way. He has prepared all this, all this way for us to have such faith. So I just hope that we would not forget about this. You know. Let's call on the name of the Lord so that the objective word will become the subjective word in us. Well, we need to apply this word. You know, you know especially when we just tell the Lord, Lord Jesus, I love you. I think we all have this experience like we just tell the Lord Jesus I love you and you know these words become quite quite uh, enlivened quite a fate to us you know there is one trainee that told me that he practiced Holy Word of Morning Revival but to her there is no effect he still stay the same so I say, so I asked her, how'd you do it? He said, well, in the morning I wake up. After doing my stuff, I go in, open the book, and I read. But after I read, I expect something to happen. Nothing happened. <laughs> he says, so day after day I went through that. I said, maybe you are not practicing your spirit to touch the spirit of the word. So he said, oh. So he did that. After a month, he, she came back to me and said, whoa, the word <laughs> is spirit. You know, sometimes we just forget. Don't you think so? Because maybe because of our time, you know, we have to rush to work. We need to take the children to school. You know, we are in such a rush. You know, if you want to touch the Lord so that the Lord could touch you, you need to spend time with the Lord. Yeah. That means, that means, you sleep earlier so that you can wake up earlier. You know, people say, oh, I cannot wake up in the morning. It's because you slept so late. <laughs> you sleep in the morning. So how can you wake up in the morning? Isn't that true? You know, I'm saying this because my children was telling me this. Oh, it's so hard. One of the hardest things in FTTA is to wake up at 5.30. I say, why? Go to sleep, then you can wake up. <laughs> Anyway, let's just make time for the Lord. Yeah. Don't you think that's wonderful? Yeah. We can all make time. <laughs> make time for the Lord. Okay. You know, I, I just hope that, like B here is saying, the written word, the living word, and the applied word refer to God himself. This written word, the living word, and applied word refer to God himself. God's written word in the Bible becomes Christ as the living word who is applied to us as the spirit, the word of the spirit. The more that God is gained by us in this way, the more he becomes our faith. Oh, the more he becomes our faith. So 
when we come and touch the word and when we apprehend the word, we would receive the word in this way and God who is the word itself will be gained by us, will be gained by us. So the more we gain Christ in this way, the more we gain the word, the more we will have faith, okay? And then see here says, the crystallization. You know, when Brawley talked about this point, he started this way. He said, the crystallization of faith is to believe that God is. The crystallization of faith is to believe that God is. And then he followed with this sentence that is in the outline. The crystallization of the source of faith is God. In his written word, contacted as the living word and applied as the word of the spirit, so that we can gain the trying God who is able to call the things not being as being and give life to the dead. Oh, this is wonderful. Huh? Oh, we need to see that this God is embodied in Christ. And this Christ is realized as the spirit. Okay, and this spirit is actually the faith. You know, so when you open yourself to touch this spirit, this spirit become the indwelling spirit. You know, recently, as I was praying about this, you know, I was just so touched. One day I was so touched that this all included life-giving spirit is also the indwelling spirit. Amen. So it's not something outside of us. You know, for us to admire, but it's sometime, something that has entered into you and me for us to enjoy, for us to subjectively experience. Amen. Don't you think this is wonderful? Amen. You know, I can still remember that day, you know, the Lord just touched me that he is the indwelling spirit. Amen. Oh, he's not just the life-giving spirit. He's not just the compounded spirit. He's done all these things so that he can enter into us to become the indwelling spirit. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, Abraham must have touched this faith so that although he does not have children, he believed the word of God. The word of God has touched him. So he believed that one day he's going to have Isaac. That's a believing in the word of God. But then the word, the Lord come to him again. He said, now you have to go and offer up this Isaac on an altar. You know, I don't know what I would do. I may tell the Lord, Lord, would you go take a hike? I'm not gonna believe this. <laughs> you gave me this son, and now you want to offer me to offer this son. But Abraham believed in the Lord. That's why so many people say that he is very good in faith. <laughs> and he did because he believed that even though this son would be offered up, the Lord would send him another Isaac or he would send him a replacement of Isaac. You know, today, I just hope we would have such faith in the Lord. You know? And to have such faith, we need to spend time with the Lord so that the Lord would actually infuse us with more and more faith. Okay, and if we have this faith, all thing that is impossible become possible. Okay, that's why I love that hymn by Charles Wesley. You know, all things are impossible, but to us, to the Lord, everything is possible. Okay, and there, there is one sentence here in Roman number two. He said, we need to see the effect of faith. Nothing is impossible to faith. We need to see the effect of faith. Nothing, oh, nothing is impossible to faith. You know, uh, before I came here, there was a, uh, an incident in uh, Anaheim. A brother came to Anaheim and he wants me to meet with his family. And there are 22 of them. Okay, and he also invited the CEO of a newspaper in Anaheim, in LA, okay, 
And because they are believers, he wants me to go and preach the gospel, not the gospel, you know, to bring them into the church life. You know, so I said, well, this is quite important. But that is before I came up here. So I was wondering, first of all, I wonder, these people just travel a long way. I don't know if they are all infected or not. You know, for me to go sit with them, 22 of them, one night in a Chinese restaurant, I'm sort of afraid, you know. <laughs> so I was praying to the Lord. I said, Lord, what should I do? And then I fellowship with Elton Carr. You know, Elton Carr is not much help in this area. He said, yeah, I know this is difficult, but what do you do? <laughs> so he said, well... You need to pray for me and I'll pray. Okay. So we were praying so much. You know what happened? The impossible thing happened. That brother that invited me got COVID. <laughs> so he called me and said, everything canceled. Because he doesn't want us to. Well, I'm not saying it's impossible to have COVID. But to have COVID at that time, you know, it's... The Lord has arranged all these things. So I was able to spend more time with the Lord in considering these two messages that I have to speak. You know, yeah, and the effect of faith. You know, it's mainly from these two verses here. One is in Matthew 17, 20, which is under A. If you have faith like a master seat, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. If you have faith, even a little faith, like a mustard seed. Have you ever seen mustard seed? I think you all know mustard, you know, because you like to put it in your hamburger. <laughs> but it's already smashed. You know, a mustard seed is very small. You know, the flower is very small. It's a yellow kind of flower. Any one of you see mustard seed? You have? Is it small? It's tiny. You know, so I don't know for a mustard, jar of mustard, you know, how many seeds they have to put in there. You know, but even if we such a small faith, you know, just a little faith like this, we can move mountain. Because nothing is impossible with faith. Nothing is impossible with faith. You know, like just brotherly actually point this uh, hymns up, you know, in 535, written by Charles Wesley. And he is talking about faith, especially in uh, stanza five, in the third line of that uh, hymn. He said, let me no longer live, but thee. Let me no longer live, but thee. So brotherly, love this sentence here. He said Charles Wesley actually saw something. He saw that uh, with faith, we will annul ourselves and reveal Christ to us. You know, you will no longer live. That means you annul yourselves. But you live Christ because you saw Christ. Because so this is faith, okay? This is the real faith. The real faith will annul us. The real faith would ask us to fully depend on the one that is Christ. And nothing is impossible with Christ. Okay, so when we look at Matthew 17, 20, it's talking about faith. Nothing is impossible with faith. But if you go to uh, chapter 19, verse 26, it's talking about nothing is impossible to God. Nothing is impossible to God. Okay, see here, it reads, Only God is all able, omnipotent. Nothing is impossible to him. But the Lord also said that nothing is impossible to faith, indicating that God and faith are one. God and faith are one. That's why when we say we believe into the Lord, the Lord enter into us, faith into us. God and faith are one. Faith is the subjective God. 
applied to our being. Thus, just as nothing is impossible to God, nothing is impossible to faith. Nothing is impossible to faith. Oh, so what are we talking about when we talk about faith? Faith is God subjectively applied to our being. Faith is God subjectively applied to our being. Don't you think that's a wonderful definition of faith? Faith is just God himself. But this God has to be applied subjectively to us so that we can have faith. When we have more of this God, when the element of God, uh, when the element of God, the divine element is increasing us, then faith grows at the same time. Faith grows at the same time. God is that faith in us. But this faith in us needs to grow, needs to grow. I don't know if you have read the biography of Hudson Taylor. You know, he has such a burden to go to China, right? To preach the gospel. But he spent, I think, two years so that the faith in him will increase. You know, I, I don't know if you read that autobiography, you know, Brother Ni nee and Brother Lee, that, 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 so, so I read that a few times, you know, and I was just so touched. Even if we have the burden to go serve the Lord, we need to allow this faith to increase in us so that we can actually serve the Lord. You know? Okay, let's go to three here. Roman number three says, the believers, the believing ones in Christ are the household of faith. I think James touched this. You know, we are all in the household of faith. So what is our surname? Our surname is Faith. Don't you think that's wonderful? Oh, our surname is Faith. So from now on, call me Albert Faith. <laughs> My surname is Faith. We all have the same surname. Don't you think wonderful? Because we are all in the household of Faith. Amen. Galatians 6.10 talks about this, you know. He said that, and especially toward those of the household of the faith. And then A here said, the household is a big family. A family name is faith. This is the home of faith. We may say that a certain home is the Smith home or the Lee's home, but now we are all members of the faith home. We are members of this great family, the household of faith. This faith house is a house that believes in God through his word. That believe in God through his word. You know, I'm very thankful to the Lord that I grew up in a family who recognized this point so much. Even as a young child, you know, my mother would always tell us we belong to the household of faith. So there is no options. We need to believe in the Lord. You know, we need to believe into the Lord because we are of this household. Okay, don't you think that is wonderful? We all are in this household of God. And then when we come to the household, you know, we just enjoy it so much. Yeah. I think some of you know, you know, my parents has a big household. She has 12 children. Can you imagine that? I have three children and I'm already calling on the name of the Lord. <laughs> but she has 12 children, nine boys, three girls. Mamma mia. You know, but praise the Lord. The whole household believe in the Lord. The whole household is in the Lord's recovery. So when we come together, the most enjoyment we have is to pray and to read the word of God. Amen. You know, we yearly had reunions. You know, where is our reunion? It's always in Anaheim during the semi-annual conference. <laughs> you know, that's where we have our reunion. We don't go to the mountain. We don't go to the beach. We go to this dinky town called Anaheim. <laughs> and we don't go to Disneyland. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. 
We are all in this household, household of faith. Don't you think that is wonderful? Okay. Okay, let's go to Roman number four. Now we have 10 Romans number to go, you know, so I better be quick. <laughs> Don't you think this is a long outline? Because this, prop, this matter of linking faith is very important. You know? Okay, Roman number four. The believer's faith in Christ brings them into the life union. Oh, wonderful, into the life union with Christ. The word of God is embodied within Christ and realized in the spirit to be our faith. The believers live Christ and walk by this faith. The believers live Christ and walk by this faith. Oh, praise the Lord. With this faith, we are brought into the life union with Christ. The word that is the embodiment of God in Christ and realized as a spirit become our faith. The believers who believe in Christ will walk by faith. Oh, praise the Lord. Today, we don't just have faith. We want to walk by faith. You know, when we receive the Lord, you know, we receive the eternal life. That means we have this life union with the Lord. Okay, A here says, To believe into Christ is to receive Him and be united with Him as one. Mm. To believe into Christ. Just as I said, you know, it's not just to believe in Christ. You know, that there is a Christ, there is historical Christ, but we want to believe into Christ, which means to receive Him and to be united with him as one. You know, some of the verses here are very important, so I may read these verses. This is in John 1, 12. For as many as receive him, to them he gave the authority to become the children of God, to those who believe into his name. Verse 13, who were begotten not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. They are begotten of the will of God. In John 3, 16, which we all know, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that everyone who believes into him would not perish, but would have eternal life. Oh, we are brought into such a life union. And B here says, this faith brings us into the life union with Christ, who is the embodiment of God realized as the all-inclusive spirit to be our faith. Faith links us with the triune God. Faith links us with the triune God. You know, I hope that you don't think that these things are common. You know, just to say that God is embodiment in Christ. Many Christians don't know that, you know. Many Christians, they don't know that. They never talk about such things, you know. God is embodied in Christ and realized as a spirit. Amen. You know? And then talking about the trying God. I don't know if I ever told you this. You know, one time I was in a plane, you know, for 10 hours. And sitting beside me is a PhD from Fuller Seminary. And he was a missionary for more than 10 years. You know? And he knows about Brother Lee. And he was complaining. He said, why did Brother Lee have to keep talking about the trying God? You know, it confused so many people. You know, keep talking about the triune God. He said, God is God. Yes, he's triune. We just put that beside us and go on. So I said, well, <laughs> you need a lot of understanding. She said, yeah. He said, I'm a missionary for 10 years. I said, forget about that. Uh, <laughs> but let me give you a book by Brother Lee. And after you read it, we talk. So I told him about the triune God, how God is triune so that we can experience him. Yeah. You know, he's trying because he wants to have such a relationship with us human beings. Yeah. If he's just the almighty God in the unapproachable light, we are doomed. Because every time we go to him, we'll be burned up. <laughs> okay, but praise the Lord, you know. He is trying. He came to become a man and realize such a spirit so that he can enter into us to become the indwelling spirit so that we can have this life union with him. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay. As the organism of the triune God, Christ is the true vine and we are his branches who have been organically united with him by believing into him. 
we need to remain in this organic union by abiding in him. So how do we remain? By abiding in him. We have to take this in initiative. You know, we need to say, Lord, I want to abide in you. You know, it's actually not a hard thing, you know. Just tell the Lord, Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus. Amen. And you'll start to be abiding in him. Amen. Don't you think so? You know, just by telling the Lord, I love you. You know, you will be in your spirit. You know, no one can call on the name of the Lord unless they are in their spirit. Isn't that true? This is Romans 10. You know, when you call on him, that means you make a definite decision to abide in him. And if you abide in him, then he will abide in you. Okay, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do, you can only do something called nothing. Okay. That is what we could do, nothing. So we just make sure we abide in him, all right? And indeed here it said, faith is the linking of our salvation. It links God with us and links us to God. This linking make us God men. Oh, this linking make us God men. Don't you think this is wonderful? This faith, is the linking faith. It does the work of linking. Okay? It is operative, it is active. It is ongoing, praise the Lord. He is ongoing in the matter of linking us with God. Oh, this linking. Start from the morning and goes through the evening, through the night. We just allow him to link us with God and God with us. You know? Oh, we need, brothers and sisters, Especially in these days, we need to be in this linking faith. Oh, don't get out of Christ experientially. Don't be disconnected. Stay in this linking. Remain in the Lord. And faith, which is Christ, which is God himself, will operate in us to continue in his work of organic salvation. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, now we come to eat. We live Christ by a linking organ. You know, this linking faith is the linking organ. And this linking organ is faith. Amen. That's Paul says in Galatians 2.20, that the life that he lived, he lived by faith. He lived by this organ called faith. The faith of Jesus, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Oh, faith is the linking organ. It's a faculty where we can live in faith. Okay, that's why Paul in Galatians 2.20 says, you know, you know, we all remember I'm crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. But the latter part is also very important. And the life which I now live, in the life which I now live in the flesh, I live in faith. The life that I live, I live in faith. Okay. Okay, F. When we call upon the Lord by saying, Oh Lord Jesus, I love you. He becomes the faith imparted into us so that we spontaneously we spontaneously live him by this faith. Living faith operates through our love for the Lord. Our living faith is through our love for the Lord. He himself as the faith becomes our faith. And this is the linking organ to link us to the unlimited, infinite Christ. Okay. And now... Um, Galatians 5, 6 says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything or uncircumcision. He's talking about, you know, it's not a matter of your outward circumcision or uncircumcision. But faith, but faith avails. Faith avails. Operating through love. Faith avails, avails 
operating through love. You know, that's why, you know, for us to tell the Lord that we love him is very, very important. You know? Every day, I hope we would always tell the Lord that we love him. I think in most of our experiences, you know, when we tell the Lord we love him, something inside us has such a response. Don't you think so? You know, I really love the Lord, you know, for telling us that he likes us to tell him that we love him. I don't know about you, you know, recently on Mother's Day, my wife said, when is the last time you told me I love you? <laughs> so I have to try to remember when is the last time. I truly cannot remember. <laughs> you know, so I just hope that we will not forget to tell the Lord that we love him. Don't you think so? Oh, if we tell him we love him, this faith in us would actually increase because faith avails through the operation of our love for him. G, by just speaking a simple word to the Lord in conversation with him, out of our love for him, and by a little calling on the Lord, we are infused with him. The infusing of Christ into us causes us to have him as our faith, which is the linking organ that link us with him. This is the way to live Christ. Amen. This is the way to live Christ. I think we can all experience this, you know. You know, sometimes we have difficulty, you know, trying to follow the Lord, trying to imitate the Lord, you know, but forget about all this. Just call on Him. Amen. <laughs> oh, just enjoy Him. Amen. You know, I, I teach this class called God Ordained Way in FTTA. And I asked him one time, you know, how many of you like to go preach the gospel? Majority of them, they are in the training. Majority of them don't like to go preach the gospel. Can you imagine? So I was wondering, what's wrong here? You want to be trained, but after you train, what do you do? So I started to go to the Lord and say, how come? I don't think it's just the training. You know? If I ask all of you to raise your hand, how many of you love to go preach the gospel? Should we do that? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> but I said, if you really love something, even when people ask you to stop telling them, you will still tell them about it. Isn't that true? So maybe we do not preach the gospel because we do not love the Lord that much. You cannot say you don't love the Lord, you know, you love him, you know. But you know, you may ask the Lord to step aside, you know, or you do your own thing. You know, but you really enjoy loving the Lord. You know, you would tell everyone. And I have seen person like this, that they would tell everyone, they go meet about the Lord. I don't know if I told you, you know, some of you know my mother, you know. My mother loved the Lord so much because as a young person, you know, the favorite book she enjoyed is Revelation. I have never seen a young person enjoy Revelation. You know, because people say, oh, this is so, so scary. It's a horror movie. <laughs> but my mother said, because the Lord called for overcomer, she always wanted to be an overcomer. You know, as a kid, you know, when we go to, uh, when she bring us to a doctor's office, you know, many times I was so embarrassed because she felt like she has a captured audience. <laughs> All these people sitting there in the waiting room, they're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> so he started preaching the gospel to every one of them. I, yeah, yeah, I was going to hide myself. <laughs> but from that, I know that someone could love the Lord so much, they don't care about their face. They don't care you know, who these people are. They just want to preach the gospel because they love the Lord. Don't you think it's wonderful? Oh, let's ask the Lord. Let's tell the Lord we love him. The more we tell him we love him, the more I think we would love him. Don't you think so? This is very, very special. You know? You know, if you tell someone you love him, you may not love him. But if you tell the Lord you love him, 
this love within you would actually increase. Okay, H, we believers walk by faith, by our, un, by our unseen God, not by sight. This faith links us all the time to the wonderful God. Link us to the wonderful God. So is God wonderful to you? Okay. Okay, then I, it says, to walk by faith means that our walking is linked with God. In Luke 18, the Lord indicated that we also suffer persecution by faith. In Luke 18, 8, the Lord said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This means we have to suffer all the persecution by faith. You know, this verse in Luke 18, 8, you know, I cannot understand this for years, you know. I said, what is the Lord talking about, you know? We said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? You know, I thought that he, the Lord wants to come and find a lot of believers. But actually, he's talking about us. Do we have the faith? Can we be the one that will bring him back? Amen. You know, that means, you know, we will have faith even if we are being persecuted. Then we will go through persecution, all kinds of different persecution, because we believe in the Lord. You know, but if we have faith and is willing to suffer through all this, then the Lord will return because he has found faith on this earth. Oh, Lord Jesus, may we have such faith, even willing to be persecuted for the Lord. Okay, five. The way to receive such a linking faith is to contact its source, the process and consummated God by calling on him, praying to him, pray reading his word and musing on his word. This faith links us with God and imparts, transfuses God into us. Then we will become men of faith. You want to become men of faith? Contact the source. Contact the process and consummated trying God, which is the all-inclusive spirit today. How do we do that? By calling on him, by praying to him, by pray reading his word, and by musing on his word. Okay? Then we can have what Hebrew 4.16 is talking about. We can all come forward with boldness to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace for timely help. When we call on the Lord, we would really enjoy how he is rich to all those who call upon him. When we call on his name, we will be saved from all our situation, from all of our circumstances, okay? And we need to call, not just by ourselves, but we all those who call upon him out of a pure heart. Okay. And in, in Psalm 119, 15, he said, I will muse upon your precepts and regard your ways. There is a note here too. I think Ed read this note a few times, you know, but I think, you know, we may have forgotten it already. I always wonder, you know, for me, how come I always forget what I should remember and remember what I should forget. <laughs> Isn't it true? We always forget what is pertinent, what is important, what is life. Right. But always remember, you know, who offended me you know, 25 years ago. <laughs> that is us, you know. But how do we deal with this? By musing upon the word. Okay, let me read you this out. This uh, footnote, uh, footnote one. This says, this musing is rich in meaning. The Hebrew word for muse, often translated meditate in King James Version, implies, this word muse implies to worship, to converse with oneself, to converse with oneself, and to speak aloud. The muse on the word is to taste and enjoy it, through careful consideration. Prayer, speaking to oneself and praising the Lord may also be included in musing on the word. To muse on the word of God is to enjoy his word as his breath and thus to be infused with God, to breathe God in 
and to receive spiritual nourishment. So don't you think it's wonderful? Don't meditate, muse on the word of God. Muse on the word of God. A here said, the faith links us with God and imparts, transfuses God into us to become our living faith. This is the faith of the believers in its progressing stage. You know, faith goes to the initial stage and it also goes into the progressing stage. Okay, so we should not remain only in the initial believing, but we need to, you know, be linked to this faith so that this stronger linking with God will infuse more of Himself into us, into this living faith so that we can make progress in our faith. B here says the initial stage of faith is the faith that comes from the hearing of the word. And the spirit was installed into us through the hearing of the word. Now this spirit or this faith which has been installed into us, stay within us, stay within us and grows. It has to grow. It has to increase. Our faith needs to grow. Because our faith needs to be developed, needs to be cultivated, needs to be increased more and more until even unto maturity. Okay. <clears throat> See, Romans 1.17, you know, this is a very important verse, you know. Before Brother Lee spoke about this verse, I never know that this verse is so important. Okay, but with this outline, huh? Romans 1.17 says, the righteous shall live by faith. Now, the righteous shall have life and live by faith. This verse reveals the structure of the gospel of God. It's a structure of the gospel of God in the three things, the righteousness of God, the life of Christ, and the faith of the believers. Okay, it reveals in this structure of the gospel, of the whole gospel, is in these three things, you know. The righteousness of God, the life of Christ, and the faith of the believer. This first can also be considered as the banner of God's eternal economy. Amen. Okay, so it's a structure. It's also the banner of God's economy. Okay. You know, all these three points are stressed very much in the book of Romans. This verse can be considered as the abstract of the entire book of Romans. Mm -hmm. And here the ministry tells us that this can be considered even as the banner of God's eternal economy. This is really the case. What do we have in our view of the gospel? You know? It is about the righteousness of God, the life of Christ, and the faith of the believers. Okay. So D here says, to have a life of faith is the initiation. To live by faith is the going on, the progressing stage of faith. Faith in the second stage, the progressing stage, is the linking faith that comes to us through our contacting the trying God. Then he says, if you contact God, faith grows in you, which means that God increases in you. We all have the same faith in quality, but the quantity of faith we have depends upon how much we contact the living God so that we may have him increased in us. When God increases in us, the linking faith in the second stage grows in us. Okay, I think that is very clear, right? He's talking about, you know, we all receive the same quality of faith when we believe in the Lord. But the quantity of faith needs to increase. Okay, the quantity of faith needs to increase. Okay, okay then five, Roman number five says, Romans 12, three says, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to be sober-minded as God has apportioned to each a measure of faith. You know, to put this verse here has a big meaning here, you know. It's talking about faith, you know. It's not just allocated, it is also apportioned. We are all allocated with the same quality of faith. 
but how much faith is apportioned to us. It's a different thing. It's a different thing. That's why Ahu said, to think more highly of self, that we ought to think without a sober mind and knows the proper order of the body life. God gave us the same faith in quality, but not in quantity. The matter of quantity depends upon how we grow. If we grow today as the Apostle Paul grew, the portion of faith we receive will be greatly enlarged. That's why actually, brother, you said this. If you think you have the same quantity of faith as Paul, you must be crazy. You know, and it's in the book. I don't know, probably would you, you must be crazy in the book. <laughs> so, are you crazy? <laughs> and B, he said, God first allotted faith to us in quality, and then he apportioned it in quantity. What kind of faith we have depends upon God's allotment. How much faith we have depends upon God's apportioning. Oh, if we cooperate with the Lord, then the Lord would be able to apportion us a greater measure of faith. See, God's apportioning depends upon our attitude. If we are not sober-minded, God would not increase his apportioning of faith to us. And he probably would even decrease it. Lord Jesus. So, brother and sister, let's be humble before the Lord. Let's not be proud. You know, our attitude should be, Lord, I'm not, you are everything. I'm nothing, but you are everything. And then seven, faith is the indicator of the believer's life in the enjoyment of the divine trinity. Faith is the indicator, you know, how much we enjoy the divine trinity is indicated by the amount of faith that you have, you know. You know, so all those verses there, you know. You know, like, let me read this, Romans 1, 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all because your faith is proclaimed throughout the whole world. Your faith is proclaimed. That means, you know, the apportioning of that faith to these people, to the, to the, um, to these people in Rome is something, you know, that it could be proclaimed throughout the whole world. You know, I just hope that when people come to us, they would really realize that we are people of faith. Yeah. Okay. We are not people of the world. We are people full of faith. And Ahir said, Paul remembered the Thessalonian work of faith. Their faith became such an indicator of their life in the enjoyment of Christ that they became a pattern to all the believing ones. Oh, they become a pattern to all the believing ones. And B here said, faith is not for us to accomplish great things. Maybe this is what we think, you know, we want to have great faith so that we can accomplish a lot of things. You know? But faith is not for us to accomplish great things. Faith is for us to live God. Amen. Faith is for us to live God, to express God, and to minister God to people. Faith is not for us to perform something great. Faith is to leave God and annul ourselves. Okay. See, in all that we are and do, people must see that we are enjoyers of God. People must see that we are enjoyers of God. We should always bear an indication that we are nothing and that God in Christ is everything to us. We need to be those who, like watchmen, pay more attention to life than work. Oh, I hope you have all read this book, Watchmen, the Sea of the Divine Revelation in the present age. Okay. And then eight, Roman number eight, the linking faith is the divine requirement for the overcomer to meet Christ. The linking faith is the divine requirement for the overcomers to meet Christ in his triumphant return. This is based on Luke 18, 8, where the Lord say, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith 
will he find linking faith on the earth. And Ahir said, may the Lord be merciful to us that when he comes back, he can find us as the believing ones who always trust in him, not in ourselves, who always have no assurance in ourselves, always no assurance in ourselves. And then uh, B here says, is this wonderful speaking of John N. Darby. He once said, oh, the joy, all oh, the joy of having nothing and being nothing, seeing nothing but a living Christ in glory and being careful for nothing but his interest down here. Okay, see, we are not for the big miracle, big work or big careers. The Lord is expecting to find at his coming, uh, coming back, the one who lived by the linking faith. Christ expect to find us as his heathen overcomer. Okay. And indeed here it says, the believers who live in the overcoming and exalting life by the linking faith will be found by Christ at his return as the treasures ready to receive the salvation of their souls as the end, the result of their faith. And he here says, today, we are making ourselves ready to be his bride. Oh, we should all be making ourselves ready to be his bride. Yeah. To make ourselves ready is to become an overcomer who is always linked by the living faith with the trying God. Always linked by the living faith with the trying God. And then nine here says, the overcomers who live by faith will be rewarded by Christ with the call kingship and top enjoyment of the divine life with him in the millennium, the Lord will then say, oh, I hope the Lord will say this to us. You know, I hope we can all be overcomers. When we meet him, I just hope the Lord will say to us, well done, good and faithful slave. Enter into the joy of your master. Enter into the joy of the master. Now we come to the last Roman number, you know, here in uh, Roman number 10 it says, by this linking faith, we are linked to God in Christ to participate in all that the all increase of Christ is, has, and has attained to for the producing of the organic members of Christ to constitute and build up his organic body, which will consummate in the new Jerusalem as the enlargement and expression of the eternal triune God in his unlimited glory in the mysterious mingling of divinity with humanity for eternity. This is the eternal fulfillment of Romans 117. The righteous shall have life and live by faith. The righteous shall have life and live by faith. Okay, I'll, I'll stop here.